So if you've been upgrading your PC recently, you may well have one or two of these things lying around. Uh, maybe you've gone from smaller capacity to larger capacity, or maybe you've gone to NVMe drives and you no longer need these uh, two and a half inch SSD drives in your PC. So this is kind of the situation I'm in, and um, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with these with a little bit of technology that's built into Windows. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. Today, well, I'm going to be taking some of these old SSD drives I've got that have just been lying around and using some technology that is baked into Windows. Yes, Windows storage spaces. Um, you know, this technology has been around since days of Windows uh, 8.1. Uh, you know, it's in Windows Server. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's one of those things you just don't hear a lot about it. Um, but, you know, quite a clever piece of technology, really. Certainly, um, if you're trying to achieve what I'm trying to do here. So what is Windows Storage Spaces? Well, basically, uh, you know, as a, as a concept, I suppose, in, it, it kind of goes along the same kind of lines as RAID technology. So, you know, RAID is, uh, you, you know, if certainly if your money's no object, you know, you go and get yourself a RAID controller and you have a bunch of hard drives connected to that. And, um, you know, that would give you the, uh, the option of either having performance, you know, the fastest possible speed, and transfer uh, off those disks or to give you the resilience across the disk so you know you could um, kind of you know kind of like have data spread across the disks or you can have the data mirrored across the disks now windows storage spaces is a software solution to that so you know it's it's always going to have a little bit of a, a trade-off i guess in in some ways you know when you buy a, a raid controller um, all the processing really is, is done on that controller. When you're using something that's software-based, then potentially you are going to have uh, a level of impact on the performance of your system. Nowadays, you know, processors are so fast that you, know, you may well not actually notice any performance hit uh, from using storage spaces. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, I've got RAID uh, options on my motherboard uh, and yes you know some motherboards do have a couple of ports there uh, SATA ports on there that you could use uh, for RAID for me well you know I've just moved to a new mini ITX case and I just don't really have the capacity in that to start you know throwing in extra drives and and actually you know that's not what I want as a as a solution um, the really nice thing about storage spaces is that it doesn't have to be restricted to drives that are connected to um, you know, your kind of like your SATA ports or something like that, you can actually use it with USB uh, connected drives. And that's what I'm going to do with these drives. So what I've done is I bought myself some external enclosures for these drives. These are uh, from uh, uh, Sabrent. They were about £13 each. They're actually on offer. And, uh, you know, the front just kind of like slides off and you pop the drive inside. They are just plastic, but they're not really cheap feeling. So I'll put a link down below. They, they do seem to work quite well. They've got a USB 3 port on the back. Um, they don't need any additional power. Uh, to the device, which is uh, really quite nice. And uh, you know, you've got a little indicator light on the front there as well, so that you can see whether they're working or not. So I bought three of those. Uh, and the only other thing that I bought is a USB dock. So um, this is, um, you know, just a, a you know, fairly generic one, loads of these under different brands on Amazon. This has got uh, it's actually got four USB three ports on it, but obviously I'm only going to use three on the side here. Uh, you know, it's got a USB-C on it, and it's more importantly for me, it's got a USB-C connector on the uh, for for going into the back of the PC. So, you know, I'm going to get maximum speed on the um, USB 3 ports, and I'm, I've got it going into a very fast port on the back of the PC as well. And um, you know, again, this doesn't need any power. So, uh, you know, I'm not having to use any kind of adapters or anything like that. And it's got you know, a really long cable as well. You know, when you see a lot of these things, they've got really tiny cables. They're meant just to be plugged into laptops. So what I'm going to do with this, this is going to be attached underneath my desk out the way. And I will just have a stack of these uh, drive enclosures sat on 
the desk and that's going to be my external storage uh, for, for basically just random stuff that I need to quickly dump onto drive. So, uh, you know, I won't be needing to take up multiple USB ports on my PC because it will all be connected via the one USB-C port. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all of the drives into the external enclosures and then I'm going to take you through the setup and configuration process for Windows storage spaces. So I'm going to be setting up Windows storage spaces on Windows 11. Now, um, from what I can see for the instructions on Windows 10, I, I just can't see any, any differences there. So I think you, know, you should be good for uh, doing it on that if, you, if you're following this guide. Um, Microsoft say you need two drives in addition to your drive that's got your operating system on. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm taking three additional drives and doing it that way. So, uh, you know, I'm not using the operating system drive as part of the, um, you know, the storage space overall. So before you get going with storage spaces, you're going to have to clear down all of the partitions that are on your existing drives. Uh, it's no use just formatting them. You have to uh, actually remove the partitions that are there. So take your partition manager of choice and go ahead and delete all of those existing partitions. So once you've deleted your partitions, you then need to go into storage spaces. So just click on your start menu and type in uh, storage spaces and you see there it just comes up on the menu option. So <clears throat> click on that. So once you've launched storage spaces, you will have an option here to create a new pool and storage space. So just click on that and then it will list out the drives that you want to add to the storage pool. So this is your uh, collection of available drives that you've got that you're going to be allowed to create um, ultimately this, this virtual pool of drives that you can then create your spaces on. Now I'm going to create one massive space on mine. I don't want to separate it out but you could do that if you wanted to do that. Um, so I've got these three drives as you can see uh, three very different capacities 230 gig, 465 and 930 gigabytes there. So I'm going to select those drives and create the pool. And basically what it is doing now is just preparing those drives in that pool. So it will then ask you for what you want to call this. Uh, so um, I'm just going to leave it as storage space, drive letter that and the file system as NTFS. And then um, I then get the option of what uh, resiliency I want. Now if I want um, you know, the fastest possible uh, transfer from these drives I would uh, select simple so that's got no resiliency. If the drives fail um, you know I'm, I'm not going to get anything really from those. Um, you know I can have a two-way mirror um, so you know this needs at least two drives and, and that effectively will have uh, you know, as, as the name suggests, a mirror copy of the data on that. I then have an option of a three-way mirror, but I'm going to need five drives to achieve this. So obviously I can't really do that. So uh, I've only got three drives available. And then um, my last option um, is to have uh, parity. So this is, um, you know, three drives, which is, so I could choose that as an option. Um, and that will uh, basically protect me from a single uh, drive failure within that group of three. So um, because I want this as just effectively just a scratch disk, I'm not particularly fussed about, uh, you know, loss of information. This is temporary information. You know, I want this to be as fast as possible. So I'm going for the, the simple option. And as you can see here, uh, you know, I've got a total pool capacity of 1.5, nearly 1.6 terabytes. And uh, you know, so uh, with with the resi resiliency, so there's there's literally nothing there. So it's 1.57 terabytes I'm going to have here. So um, I'm happy with that information. I'm going to create the storage space, and um, as you can see, that has then popped up with uh, Explorer, and I've now got a drive M. So. What do I see within storage spaces? So I've got um, using two and a half gig of 1.58 terabytes pooled capacity. Um, so uh, I have a storage space, um, which is 
using all of that. As you can see there, there is the, uh, the overall usage of those drives. Um, if I wanted to, I could have made smaller storage spaces. So, um, you know, I could have had a, a small amount for, uh, you know, maybe kind of like scratch files with video editing or something like that. And I could have had uh, space for, you know, other temporary files, downloads or something like that. Um, and then you you would have seen what the, those storage spaces listed there. But basically, I've got those three there. They're all uh, perfectly good. They're all uh, healthy in there. And if I go into um, Windows Explorer and I look, just look at the properties of that, uh, as you can see there, I now have a 1.57 terabyte of uh, storage capacity there. So what I'm going to do because um, obviously the idea of this is to have this as fast as possible, is to just have a look and just see what kind of like the transfer speeds are like on this. So, so there's my small file test there. So I'm going to copy these files onto my storage space area and just paste those there. And we can see what that transfer is like. So I'm pretty happy with that in terms of overall performance. Obviously, it will vary depending upon the kind of like the, the, the content that you're trying to copy onto those drives. It's worth pointing out here as well that that, um, that mix of drives is, is two EVO Samsung drives and a QVO Samsung drive as well. So once the cache fills up on that, that QVO, um, you know, that will take a bit of a hit in terms of overall performance of that. You know, as external storage, uh, really cheap to go and set up. Um, you know, that has cost me, uh, you know, roughly £50 pounds to, to go and get that working. And I'm using the, uh, the, the built-in software within Windows. And, you know, if I wanted that resilience, then obviously I can go and choose the other options. Obviously, performance will take a little bit more of a hit because of that. But uh, overall, you know, it, it seems quick enough for me for, for what I need. So there you go, that is how I'm repurposing some old SSD drives. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Are you, are you using storage spaces or, you know, if you've got RAID or something like that? Uh, you know, is this something you've tried and you didn't like? You know, did you have problems? Yeah, share all of that down below in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.